Well, <laughs> thank you for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Luis Garcia, and today I'll be presenting how we leverage physical models to implement stealthy rootkits. Um, this is a joint collaboration between uh, Rutgers University, a technical university at, at Darmstadt, and Florida International University. So actually, I don't think the clicker's working. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know if the clicker's working or not. Oh, oh, there you go, all right. So to provide a, a brief outline, uh, we'll first uh, go over the background, then we'll dive into Harvey, which is our model aware rootkit. Then we'll discuss how we made it physics aware, and we'll go over the implementation evaluation, and then we'll conclude. So we've all seen the headlines in recent years of industrial control system attacks, and we've seen the billions of dollars in damages that they've caused, and the general objective has been to maximize physical impact through stealthiness. And before we get into how we make these attacks stealthy, I uh, first wanted to provide a brief outline, uh, a brief background into how into programmable logic controllers and how they're integrated into industrial control systems. Now, this is a typical industrial control system architecture where at the top you'd have the management level, which may consist of a SCADA server, which is a supervisor control and data acquisition center. And this is typically used for monitoring the overall system state. And it interfaces with the control level devices, which are consist of all the network devices of the system that are interfacing with both the management level and the field level devices. And in particular, this paper focuses on programmable logic controllers. And the field level devices uh, typically consist of all the sensors and actuators of the system. And now that we provided a high level overview of how PLCs are integrated into industrial control systems, uh, we can present Harvey, which is our model aware rootkit. And Harvey takes into account the physical topology of the industrial control system. And it uses the physical models to optimize uh, control commands for an adversarial objective function. And in order to implement Harvey, we assume that we can compromise the PLC's firmware. And there are many ways of doing this. Uh, you can utilize a firmware update mechanism. And you could also use a local firmware modification attacks, such as uh, SD or JTAG implantation. And you could also use runtime attacks, such as network exploits or remote code execution vulnerabilities. Now, going back to our industrial control system, you would typically have a field device, which is an actuator and sensor, and you'd have your HMI, your human machine interface, and the PLC would be sitting in between both of them. And the PLC would have a physical I.O. channel that's communicating with the actuator and sen or sensor, and you'd have a network communication with the HMI. And the HMI is sending programmatic and operational commands uh, to the PLC. Now, let's see how Stuxnet works. Stuxnet, uh, very uh, in a, briefly, it uh, compromises the PLC control logic uh, by compromising the HMI. And the HMI would se essentially send malicious PLC code uh, to the, uh, uploaded to the PLC. And then it would also modify the HMI such that it would prevent detection of these PLC modifications. And in order to do so, it would record a series of benign measurements and replay them back to the HMI. Now, how does this compare to our, our, our Harvey? Um, Harvey actually doesn't require uh, the compromising of the HMI as it resides in the firmware of the PLC. And we can also calculate, uh, instead of doing record and replay tech, uh, attacks, uh, we can calculate fake, generate fake data using the actual physical model of the system uh, and it provides a more flexible attack for more dynamic systems. And you know, Stuxnet has been around for a few years, and as such, um, several security solutions have been proposed to mitigate attacks such as Stuxnet. Um, so let's see how Harvey will fare. We're going to discuss how they'll fare uh, against these solutions. So uh, in 2014 here, the Trusted Safety Verify was presented, and this was a bump in the wire solution that would essentially uh, sit as a bump in the wire between the PLC and the HMI and it would observe, uh, it, it would analyze the PLC code uh, and formally verify it against any safety specifications of the system. And although this would verify any code that was being loaded onto the PLC, it was typically an offline analysis uh, and, it even, and it also analyzed code that was being loaded onto the application layer of the PLC. And Harvey resides in the firmware, so it would easily circumvent the solution. And 
The second solution we consider is the weasel board, which is a chassis-based intrusion detection solution. And this would work by sitting on the chassis of a PLC and would monitor all the communication between all the modules of a PLC. Uh, but again, this was an external solution as it sat external to the I.O. module of the PLC. And even if it could uh, detect an attack like Harvey, it would be a passive analysis. Um, so diving deeper into the PLC, um, PLCs typically work by scanning the inputs and propagating the input values through some uh, programmable logic and then uh, updating the associated outputs. So this is what we call a scan cycle. And a scan cycle works by essentially taking the sensor measurements and propagating through the input of the hardware uh, through the input module of the firmware. And then these values are then sent up to the control logic or the application layer. And these input values are then sent through a, a programmable logic circuit. And then the associated uh, output ports are updated. In parallel, you have a, uh, what we call a cyber world where which includes all of the network industrial control system components, including a human machine interface uh, where that would be manned by an operator. And they would be uh, monitoring the overall system state. And so these output values would then be uh, propagated back uh, through the output modules of the firmware, uh, through the hardware output, through the actuators of the system. And for our adversary model, as we mentioned before, Harvey resides in the firmware of the system. Uh, and we, we implement Harvey as a stealthy attack. And we say stealthy because it would be easy for us to just simply brick the PLC uh, and call it a day, but we've seen that in the past, as in Stuxnet, um, that the stealthy attacks have a more enduring uh, impact. And we also assume that we only need to compromise the PLC. Uh, we don't necessarily need to compromise the HMI for this case. And Finally, we assume that we can extract the physical model of the system. And although this is a strong assumption, it's, it's been shown in the past that using insider information, you can extract the physical model and also or by compromising auxiliary systems such as those that uh, monitor the system state. Now that we've gone over the architecture of the PLC, we can discuss how we made uh, Harvey physics aware. And I'm going to consolidate a few of the components just for abstraction purposes. We're going to merge the control logic with the cyber world and the hardware with the physical world and isolate the firmware. And so now we have the operator uh, interfacing with the legitimate control logic. And that's sending legitimate control through the firmware to the physical system. And the sensors are sending the actual measurements through the firmware to the legitimate control logic. This is what we consider the normal operation of the PLC. And once Har uh, the firmware is infected with Harvey, Harvey will split the firmware into two models. Um, at the top, we have the benign physical model, um, where legitimate control is being fed into a benign physical model in order to generate fake legitimate looking measurements to the operator. And then on the bottom, we have the malicious physical model, where actual measurements from the system are being fed into a malicious model in order to generate adversary optimal control. So now that we've discussed an overview of, of how Harvey works, we can actually discuss the implementation. And we use a Compact Logics L1 PLC. And I'm just going to provide an overview of some of the components that will be necessary for understanding future attacks. Um, this is the, the blue LED strip corresponds to the 16-bit digital input uh, module at the bottom of the PLC. And the green LED strip represents the 16-bit digital output at the bottom. So if you have a high value on the output port of, of, uh, of on output port zero, uh, the green, uh, the LED zero for the green uh, LED strip will be high. So in order to implement our attack, we needed to intercept the I.O. communication of the PLC. So we decided to open up the PLC, and we wanted to see if we can establish a JTAG communication. And uh, so we took a look at the microcontroller of the system, and it conveniently had a data sheet online. And it allowed us to, uh, to identify the JTAG pins of the microcontroller as well. And using a multimeter, we were able to see, uh, to identify the pins uh, on the board for a JTAG communication. And once we established this JTAG communication, we were able to dump the memory uh, for code disassembly in IDAPRO. And we also used the data sheet uh, to find the memory layout and the built-in ROM functions. And, Long story short, we were able to find the 
interrupt service routines associated with uh, updating the GPIO output and input ports. And this is actually um, the modified version of the GPIO output update in, uh, ISR. So we, we essentially modified it by in, injecting a, a simple branch instruction that would uh, branch to an arbitrarily uh, maliciously injected code. And this is how we would uh, inject our uh, malicious and benign physical models. And we had a similar implementation for the GPIO uh, input update ISR. And so now that we've, we've shown how we do this, we actually implemented a simple proof of uh, concept attack where we, Harvey would uh, spoof the inputs. Um, so here we have a simple control logic circuit uh, where input ports zero and one are being fed into an end gate and output port with an output at output port one. So as you can see, the, the, LED, um, the LEDs show that input ports zero and one are high, so that means output port one is high. But if you take a look, and that's exactly what the LEDs in HMI would see, the logic. But if you take a look at the actual inputs, there's no inputs being put into the device. So we made the PLC believe that we actually are putting two high voltages at input ports zero and one, but there's actually nothing being placed in the, on the device. So this would be an example of how we can manipulate the sensor data. And similarly, we, we did a similar attack for uh, spoofing the outputs, where you can see that here uh, the output LED zero is high, and while the GPIO output port is low when, um, using the a volt, a multimeter. And, and uh, we, here, uh, output port LED is uh, one is low, and the GPIO uh, reading was high. So this would be an example of um, malicious actuation. And so this was a simple attack. Uh, now we wanted to do a more advanced attack where we wanted to make a malicious PID controller. And PID controllers are typically used in control systems for, um, for, for controlling the actuation of the system where you'd have, where you'd compare the output of the system to the set point and, and use the, and propagate the error through uh, proportional integral and derivative components uh, that are summed together to control the actuation of the system. And, and this is widely used in uh, different domains. Here is just it's simply used uh, by drones to control the motors. Uh, that's just one simple example that we can tell, but it, and it's even, uh, it's actually integrated directly into the development environments of PLCs. This is a, an instru a PID instruction for PLCs, but we didn't actually have the source code for these instructions, so we had to uh, create our own and compile it, and this was a not optimized or stripped in any way, so the next step was to see how feasible it was, would be to inject such a code uh, in terms of size constraints. And uh, w after doing uh, some analysis, we found, well, you can see that the actual PID instructions from the development environment is much smaller than our PID attack code. And regardless, it's, we had plenty of space to uh, actually inject this code after uh, analyzing the available memory. And so we utilize this PID uh, uh, attack code in our uh, sorry, one, one too far, for a real-world attack demo where we, uh, we attacked a, a power grid test bed uh, at Florida National University. And on the left, you can see uh, the, the operator view of the system. And he, although there's some perturbations, you can see that it was generally viewed as uh, a stable operation where on the right, we had the actual measurements of the system where we drove some of the uh, control variables to unsafe limits and it caused uh, instability throughout the system and, and caused several safety, uh, safety violations. Um, and I, we don't have the, the physical equations here, but if you would like to discuss the attack in detail, we could either discuss it offline or you could refer to the paper. And for possible mitigations, we, uh, we discussed remote attestation to verify the software integrity of the system. And we also discussed secure boot, uh, where you can verify the device by itself. And we also discussed uh, in external bump in the wire solu uh, solution where you'd monitor the sensor to PLC and PLC to actuator data streams. So in conclusion, we presented Harvey, which is a, a physics aware man in the middle attack against industrial control systems. And Harvey damages the underlying physical system while providing the operators with an exact view of what they expect to see. And we evaluated our solution on an Allen Bradley PLC and we also perform res responsible disclosure. Um, and I'd be glad to take any questions.
Uh, if you have a